Okay. So our first lecture will focus on uh, insect pest monitoring uh, for timing of uh, control measures and also insect pest crop yield loss uh, models. Uh, we want to see how we can assess uh, the impact of the presence of uh, insect pests to crop yield uh, losses. So, pest monitoring, uh, we can determine the distribution of the pests in the cropping areas. Like I said, we had such an exercise uh, around the Murewa area, actually for the two seasons. Monitoring is important for forecasting pest outbreaks. If we have this uh, data with us about the pests, <coughs> we can uh, predict when an outbreak is likely to occur and therefore we are likely to take uh, some measures. I understand there has been some four armyworm out outbreaks in certain parts of uh, Zimbabwe and of course some control measures had to be taken but what I don't know is whether <coughs> farmers were prepared for these uh, outbreaks or whether when they occurred people knew about them so what we are saying is that uh, if we have information about this pests, we are likely to predict when an outbreak is likely to occur and we are more prepared to deal with the problems. Otherwise, we end up being overwhelmed by these uh, insect pests. Uh, we can use uh, traps so that uh, probably we do some counts Uh, reliable estimates of pest incidents probably we need to take some uh, samples that are representative of uh, insect uh, pest abundance because if there is bias uh, we may have interest in certain uh, sampling areas uh, we end up uh, probably underestimating the problem or uh, overestimating it. So proper sampling procedures are required. Well, these are some of the methods which are used uh, in monitoring uh, insect pests. We have got the number one malaise uh, trapping, uh, light trapping, funny trapping, pitiful trapping, beating sheet, acoustic monitoring active uh, visual uh, surveys. So we just use what is appropriate for our own conditions. So it is important to have a scientific approach when we are uh, getting this data. So the sampling techniques which are used uh, we could use a random uh, assembly. We can use a stratified assembly, and at the third, we could use a systema uh, systematic uh, assembly. Now, for random assembly, uh, 
every sembru has an equal chance of being uh, selected. Probably we look at a certain area, uh, we label the areas probably using a map, then we number the areas, then we randomly select the areas using the numbers so that we go and sample uh, a certain proportion of a representative uh, area. Uh, we can use the uh, use of coordinates selected uh, from uh, random uh, number tables. Now, in stratified sampling, we deliberately divide the symbol into different strata. Maybe we have got background uh, information about the area. Uh, it could be soil types. We may group certain soil types together. Or it could be different agroecological uh, zones. Uh, which are within the same area. You may have natural region 2, 3, and 4 in one province. So you may want to, to, to capture the agroecological differences. But uh, you now have the random samples being taken from a different uh, strata. Let's say you divided your area in natural region 2, uh, 3 and 4, probably like what we have in uh, Murewa and in Toko. Now within each natural region or within each strata, you take uh, random samples. So strata is the subdivisions of our uh, samples. Now, in the systematic samples, uh, which could be commonly used, you are taking your samples at fixed positions. Uh, you take samples at specified distance uh, interval, or you use the interval. You can also use sampling using a W pattern or a zigzag pattern in a given crop field so that uh, you capture a representative uh, sample. So these are sampling techniques so that you get uh, reliable uh, information. Uh, you can have a square field long and narrow field, uh, you, you just plan your sampling in such a way that uh, you get a representative uh, sample. Sample size is also important because uh, if you have a smaller sample, you tend to underestimate uh, what is there. So population estimate, uh, you need a good sample uh, size if you are going to estimate that uh, population. Uh, you may have absolute estimate where you try to include as many uh, candidates as possible during a sampling. You want to include as many sampling points as possible. You could have counts per unit area, counts of the insect pests, or of volume, or of plant parts, or of just a plant. For example, number of eggs per leaf, it could be number of larva per plant which you may be interested in. Now, 
we can have relative estimates where you use uh, traps. Now a trap can actually uh, prevent insects from uh, escaping and you can go and get your insects and count them. Or we can use pheromones to attract insects to a certain point, then uh, we, we, we can count them. So you, you can have active and cap capture areas. Trip data could be so variable that it becomes uh, difficult to interpret uh, data because you could have a mass of these insects. Then by the end of the day, you, uh, it, you may have difficulties in uh, getting useful information. We may also look at uh, what is known as fecundity, the number of eggs produced during the lifetime of the female insect pest. Uh, probably you may have to do some other detailed studies to get this information. Development and growth. You may also look at migration movement of insects for long distances. Maybe it's, it could be the four army one. So here we've got somebody who is trying to sample uh, for insects using that uh, for trapping. So whatever is caught in that uh, trap uh, is counted and it can give us uh, estimates of. Uh, what is in a given area. Uh, sometimes we may use a yellow uh, cards or boards which are attached to the plants and uh, these uh, services may have a, may be may have a, a Sticking a substance which actually uh, traps the insects. So here we have got various types of uh, trapping equipment. Some equipment may allow insects to get inside, but they are not going to get out of that uh, trap. And they could be placed at random or systematically placed here in fields. Again, a lot of uh, Traps being used, and in some pictures you see a number of uh, insects uh, which have been caught. This one is uh, another type of trap. It looks like a funnel at the top. If something gets inside that bottle, it's not going to get out. So you have your insects at the bottom there, uh, which are going to be counted, so that uh, we can estimate uh, the population of the insects in a given area. So let's have the monitoring strategies and objectives. Sometimes we may conduct uh, surveys in order to obtain information about insect pests uh, which are problematic in a given area. Or we could have field-based monitoring strategies 
uh, we will just target certain uh, fields or we could have a fixed position monitoring uh, strategies now let us look at a survey this is probably what we were doing in uh, <coughs> Murewa and uh, probably Mutoko areas when we were assembling for both uh, for all of the pests weeds insect pests diseases in the farmer's field now in a survey you may want to determine the status of a particular pest in an area You also want to record the environmental factors. Now, when you have uh, your population data, or uh, yeah, and you have got environmental factors, maybe you can do further analysis and try to uh, predict the incidence of uh, pests or uh, pest forecasting. Now let us look at the field-based monitoring strategy. I said in a survey it gives you a broader picture and there are possibilities which you can use uh, to predict the incidence of a pest in a given uh, location. But as for field-based monitoring strategy, this is the aimed probably at the farmer. So it can provide the farmer uh, with a decision making tool. Uh, it could be like uh, scouting for pests in a cotton field. And it, the farmers probably have a control strategy of saying that if the insect numbers reach this level, you start uh, spraying, things like that. So, some of these issues uh, are actually done so that the farmer can actually decide when, when to control or when to spray. So field-based sampling techniques, it could be traps, use of traps, or simply counting eggs in the lab on the leaf, like what they do in cotton. I think for the pink borrowing, they, they, they have to count the larva, they may have to count the eggs. If they exceed a certain number per leaf, then they know that uh, it is now time uh, to spray. Now this is very important because uh, the farmer is not just going to spray anyhow because uh, this can be costly. And also if we just spray anyhow, we may also kill beneficial uh, insects which can help us with also biological control. So we don't want it to damage the ecosystem uh, using these chemicals. But we want it to manage the chemicals uh, properly so that uh, they help us to control the pests. So, as I have just said, data on insect pests could be used to decide on insecticide applications. And we have got a typical example of the cotton spraying uh, strategies, pest spraying strategies. Now, fixed position monitoring. Uh, actually, this technique may be restricted to research stations 
where they use trips uh, which are maintained every cropping season uh, insects are assembled over a number of seasons so that uh, at that particular research station uh, there's information about the pest occurring patterns and people may have a general idea about when to spray and this data may also be applied outside that station so that uh, because it will be detailed uh, information uh, if the station has got similar conditions to the farming areas, probably it could be applied. Now let us look at the actual monitoring uh, techniques uh, for insect pests. We have what are known as light and suction traps. Uh, which are commonly used in research stations. Uh, we can have insect specific traps and insect counts on uh, crops, stages and forms uh, are also noted. Uh, we may use peg boards like that yellow uh, board which I showed you earlier on. Uh, the, the boards could be used by farmers. I think they could be cheap. Sometimes instead of monitoring these insects pests, we could have fixed schedule sprays. But the disadvantage is that uh, some of the sprays could be unnecessary. Now this is, we have a, a, a diagram here where we can use data collected from uh, pest counts. If you follow that arrow, the green arrow there, it indicates uh, where the control uh, has been uh, can be administered because the pest population will tend to exceed that green line which is the threshold so at that stage we administer a spray and the population will go down so that we can increase the benefit. But if we wait later when the population of insects is too high probably we are going to use a lot of uh, insecticides and probably a lot of damage will have uh, occurred. So crop yield loss due to insect pests, what are the factors which are important? It could be the number of pests present in a crop. Uh, also the insect development stage in a crop and the period of the pest attack, the duration. Uh, of the pest attack can contribute to crop yield loss. Important information uh, estimates of insect numbers in a crop could be important, or even the population structure of the insect pests. What are the do we have lava, pupa, and so on, adults? Probably we could determine the, the stages which are being uh, 
which are causing the damage, scale of damage, we can also assess to what extent are the insects pest damaging the crop. Type of pest damage, chewing, sucking, and boring. Now, chewing is particularly uh, harmful to the crop, or it has got a relationship to yield loss because it can reduce the photosynthetic area, uh, which contributes to either grain yield or borrow size. Chewing on the flowering and the fruit structures, uh, this can directly reduce uh, crop yields. Uh, leaf beetle, Ceratoma trifecata, will feed on, on average, 0 0.94 soybean pods uh, per day. So if we have uh, that kind of data, having many beetles, we can predict uh, the loss. Now, effects of insect pests on crops. Insects that pour into the plant tissue, like leaf miners, plant stem borers, and the insects that pour into the fruits and the grain. This may be difficult to control. And these can actually destroy uh, the, the fruits and the grain, leading to serious uh, losses. Then we have got sucking insects, which may interfere with the now partitioning of carbohydrates. You know, the movement of carbohydrates from the leaves to the seeds, which are being formed, uh, will be interrupted. And this can lead to crop yield losses. So, pro Sometimes we may need to do crop yield loss uh, surveys. We may need to do plant growth analysis and modeling so that uh, we understand better how the insect pests are affecting uh, crops. Now from uh, field surveys, Surveys which involve the use of uh, questionnaires and field sampling together could be used to assess uh, crop yield loss due to insect uh, pests. Probably you may find, you may ask the farmers whether they had taken control measures. You may compare whether they took control measures where they didn't and probably assess the impact of uh, this pests. Uh, you can carry out crop damage scores and insect uh, pest counts in sampling areas. The question is can we relate the insect pest counts to the crop damage uh, scores. You can also take uh, using quadrats after having gathered your data on the insect pest, try to measure crop yields as well. Then in your analysis you are going to relate crop yields 
or of crop yield losses to crop damage scores or insect pest counts. Uh, you may do plant growth analysis and modeling of insect pest free crops, right? Versus insect pest infested crops. You compare the two where you have infection infestation versus where you have uh, plants which are free from uh, insect damage. Some of the parameters of interest could be leaf area because it can be reduced because the insect pests are eating the leaves. Leaf area ratio can be important and it can be obtained using that uh, equation where you have probably leaf area over the weight of the leaves. Then you can also have uh, relative growth rates, crop growth uh, models can also assist to assess uh, insect pest damage or impact of uh, insect uh, pests on crops. Or we can actually deliberately conduct field experiments. So assessing the impact of artificial infestation, uh, we can infest some crops deliberately. Infested is compared to uninfested plants. Insect pest damage simulations could be done. Removing, uh, we can actually remove uh, parts of leaves of the crop to simulate uh, insect uh, pest damage. Paired treatment experiments could be done. Controls are compared to insect uh, spray uh, plots just to see the impact of uh, the insects uh, on the crops. Or a number of treatments could be used, e.g. use of insecticides to create uh, various uh, different uh, levels. Probably these are the sort of graphs which you may get when you relate uh, is it crop damage or insect plant popula uh, insect uh, populations uh, versus yield? As you increase damage or number of insect pests, you tend to decrease uh, yield. The first graph is a straight line, <coughs> but things are not that simple. Sometimes at first you don't get a, a quick drop in yield until you reach a certain threshold where control should be done. Then we have a, a big drop uh, in, uh, in the yield and you also reach a point where even if the insects are present, they can no longer do a lot of damage. Probably they finished uh, all the leaves. This is seed yield, probably related to instance of uh, pests. Let me see here. This is pollen beetle damage percentage uh, related to seed yield. So you have a, a decrease uh, 
uh, in the CD hero. So this is a yield loss or a relative yield loss where you have injury level. So if you increase the damage or it could be leaf damage due to insects which are eating leaves, the losses will also increase uh, in a sort of a curve. So that is the percent relative yield loss. Because if you plot a uh, relative yield loss, it tends to increase as you increase the injury level. But of course, if you plot against the actual yield and the injury level, at first nothing seems to be happening then you get a, a decrease so there's a region where you can actually do the <coughs> measurable uh, loss and a region where <coughs> we can define the economic loss and the yield uh, potential also what we call the threshold so we can use these graphs uh, to determine when we want to control the insects to prevent further damage so this is it for the insect uh, pests so 